Another race that's close, and surprisingly so, is the battle for uh, who holds on to the governor's mansion in Wisconsin. And Governor Evers has the fight of his life on his hand right now, uh, courtesy a strong challenge by the Republican Tim Michaels, uh, the former Re Republican governor of that beautiful state. With us now, Scott Walker. Uh, governor, good to see you. This race has turned into a barn burner. Does it surprise you? No, Wisconsin's been a, a close state for the past 20 years, and we knew even though Tony Evers was outspending Tim Michaels about two to one, that Tim Michaels is right on the issues. It's the three Ps. It's personal economic issues, it's public safety, and it's parental involvement in education. Tony Evers is wrong on all three of those, and Tim Michaels has got a good game plan on it. I'm, I'm just wondering now, given the fact that so many people focus on Senate races, House races, they're very important, and, and you know that quite well, but governors really have a lot to decide, probably more to decide about uh, residents' future than either of those, you know, bodies on the federal level. Um, so they decide other things, too, like redistricting issues and all the rest, or at least help oversee that. Um, so explain to me what you think is happening at the governor's level, because we're seeing this in, you know, the nearly three dozen races around the country where we have a lot of competitive battles. Well, you're exactly right, and, and even more so over the next few years, because even if, as I believe it will, the House and the Senate both flip Republican, you'll still have at least two years of a Democrat president. So that'll be a stalemate in Washington, and where things will actually move forward, I believe, is in the states. And you see tremendous progress out there. You're going to see some, in fact, even in places like New York and Oregon, you're likely to see, in Oregon's case, it'll be the first Republican governor since Ronald Reagan was president in New York State. It could be the first governor since 94. And it's because of these key issues, particularly in those states uh, with public safety. They can actually do something about public safety that's not being done now. I think the voters are hungry for it. The other key thing, Neil, with this is it will also have an impact on some of the key races for the Senate. You were just talking about Georgia. I think Governor Kemp's big margin that he'll win with over Stacey Abrams will actually help Herschel Walker get to that 50 percent threshold. And in Arizona, I think Carrie Lake will win, and in turn, that will help Blake Masters win that U.S. Senate race. Yeah, New Hampshire and the Nevada and the governor's races in each of those could be the key to getting the Senate back. Um, uh, while I have you, uh, uh, Governor, I'd be remiss if I didn't get maybe an intra-party dust-up of the Republican Party between former President Trump and Ron DeSantis. Uh, you heard about the president's remarks over the weekend calling him Governor Ron DeSanctimonious. Um, he dialed that back, at, I, I think, at the urging of other Republican leaders, conservative thinkers who said he was damaging the party. What did you think of it? I mean, the bottom line is we've got people on the ballot, including Ron DeSantis, who's done a whale of a great job in the state of Florida. He's been one of the leading Republican governors in the country. And so I think all of us, it's incumbent on all of us who care about not just our states, but our republic, to be focused on helping Republicans at every level win this Tuesday. I think the president was right to dial that back. And I think you're going to see all of us focused in the next, well, less than two days on getting out the vote to make sure that Republicans up and down the ticket win all across the country. So, uh, as you know, Ken Griffin, a big Republican uh, mega donor, has already placed his political lot getting beyond this midterm tomorrow, Governor, and saying he would support Governor DeSantis for president 2024. He said, we have to move on from, from Donald Trump. Your thoughts? Well, it's, it's going to be a wide open field. I think uh, President Trump, based upon what he did for four years, remarkable record, has earned the right to be considered for another two term should he be con uh, wanting to get in, which every indication is he will. But I also think it's ultimately going to be up to primary voters, whether it's Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Mike Pompeo, Mike Pence, Greg Abbott, uh, Christy Noem. There's a long list of likely candidates out there. And I think Republicans are blessed. we got a great farm team out there. Uh, unlike uh, uh, the lack of that, I think you see on the other side with not only uh, the president, Joe Biden, but Chuck mm. Schumer, Nancy Pelosi. I mean, these are these are candidates of the past. Republicans get candidates of the future. I noticed you mentioned some names there. and You left out this guy, Scott Walker. Are you just not interested <laughs> in running? I'm a quarter. I'm a quarter century younger than Joe Biden, so I got plenty of time. But right now, <laughs> the work I do with Young America's Foundation is too important. Yeah, All right. I got plenty of time. All right, let me ask you about that one last time. You've been very patient with this obnoxious line of questioning, but one had it that uh, President I Trump should, should he, I know, you're very gracious, but uh, one line had it that President Trump said it would be an act of disloyalty for someone to challenge him 
if he uh, decided to run himself. What do you think of that? I think in the end, again, it's all up to the voters. You know, the people, the most important people to listen to, I learned a long time ago, are the voters. It's not the pundits, it's not the media, it's not political insiders, it's ultimately the voters. I think a lot of people made that mistake in 2016 when they were listening to all the pundits that didn't see Donald Trump coming. More than him personally, what they didn't see was the fact that voters wanted somebody who was going to shake things up. Hmm. And that's exactly what Donald Trump did, which is why he's got the right... I think he's, he's earned the right to be considered. Whether or not voters pick him or not will be up to them. All right. Always good catching up with you, uh, Governor Walker. Be well. Hope your family's doing well. Uh, Scott Walker, the former Wisconsin governor.